Hey there, Brian and Janelle podcast listeners. Brian here with a quick item for you before we get to the main content in today's episode. I'm super excited to tell you about a brand new podcast series I created in partnership with Moody Radio that's available starting right now. It's called The Grandfather Effect. And here's the quick backstory. I only have really one strong memory of my paternal grandfather, Tom. And it was when my dad and I were standing shoulder to shoulder in a crowded room right in front of his open casket. And I remember standing there a bit mystified because you see, Grandpa Tom had lived only about 15 miles away from my house growing up. And yet I never saw him. He never talked to me, called me, never came to birthday parties. He was no part of our life. He had disowned my family when I was about three years old, and my family was left with lots of questions. Because from our perspective, the reason he disowned us didn't seem to make much sense. The circumstances were so seemingly trivial, it just didn't add up. So what happened? Well, about five years ago, I decided to try to find out. And that journey became much more complicated than I could have possibly imagined. And I chronicled the entire thing with a recorder in my hand and take you along in the journey. The podcast series is called The Grandfather Effect. Would you consider giving it a listen? I'd be super grateful for your support. And if you like what you hear, maybe you'd be willing to leave a, a nice review or even tell a friend about it. All right, let's get back to today's episode. Thanks a lot. The series continues, convicting mm-hmm. us all. Mm-hmm. For real, it's like once a week. Or maybe convicting some of us more than others, depending on the week. <laughs> This week, we're going to continue our series with one Nancy Kane. She is a friend, a mentor. She's program director for the Caritas Center for Christian Formation. She's a licensed professional clinical counselor. We're continuing our series on virtues and vices. Welcome back, Nancy. Nice to be with you guys this morning. Mm. Yes, Should we've we been... be happy that you're here? Right. <laughs> <laughs> yes, because we're all growing together. Isn't that delightful? <laughs> yeah, well, I tell you what, okay. before we get to today's <clears throat> particular vice, I want to be sure you know how hard we've been working this morning. We have been right, <laughs> sweating in the studio. Very busy, mm-hmm. up and down, in and out, thinking That's deeply. That's right. No one's just laying back around here. No. So Mm-mm. what's today's particular uh, vice, Nancy? Sloth versus diligence. <gasps> wow. So we're winning in this one. So it's what? you were gonna- Sloth. <laughs> Isn't that an acute animal? Yeah, it is. <laughs> it's from Zootopia. That's what we're talking about. The animal is from Zootopia. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Cute but slow. No, that, right. that's not what it is. So what? what is the, the vice of sloth? Sloth is um, is one of the I I think I was going to say it's the but I think pride is is the worst um, vice. But sloth is pretty close to it in terms of it's a it's a sense of really not caring about the things of the spirit. And what I mean by that is spending extra time in prayer, spending time in reflection, in asking the Lord to examine your life. The harder things that take time and energy that it's just easier to to fall into a, a mentality of tomorrow. Tomorrow I'll do this, or huh. it's not that important, or um, maybe next week I'll sign up for that Bible study. Where we're always putting it off, and in that place, we're putting in things that, that distract us and keep us busy. Well, I just thought You're, it was plain old laziness. That's what I thought. I'm like, oh, so it's connected to spiritual stuff. Right, and I think that's where most people think of sloth as like lazy, when in fact, from a spiritual lens, a slothful person is actually can actually be quite busy or even workaholic. And, what? and what? like running, 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 but they're not doing the hard work of sitting with the Lord and inviting him to speak to them about themselves and their life and about who he is. Wow. This is coming from a teaching slash host perspective. There's, There's a, a whole lot of people struggling, struggling with sloth. sloth. I'm saying like that's not even a thing in our culture to, to, for that to be a priority spiritual, our spiritual life versus our business. I'm sorry. Because you, you were ready for her. <laughs> she was ready to tell you how she likes to delegate. Yeah. <laughs> She's not slothful. Well, she think- delegates. <laughs> <laughs> And I think that that's where, you know, uh, Peter Crift has said, he's a theologian, said of all the seven deadly sins, sloth is the most distinctively modern. Nothing so clearly distinguishes modern society. 
from all previous societies as its sloth. And I think that that's mm. profoundly true. Look at how much we can preoccupy ourselves with social media, with texting. Mm. Uh, again, nothing wrong with that. But when they take the place of that sitting still and being in the presence of the Lord, there's everything wrong with it. And even what you said, there's a social media thing and all that. But even the hustle culture or the, you know, working hard, like even that you can think you're winning at like I'm diligent. And that in and of itself pushes some of us from taking care of our spiritual life in a way that's not slothful. Right, because the difference is you can be productive, but you can set an idol being productive. And so you're really doing it for yourself and for your own gain, not because you're being obedient to what God's put in front of you. So when we start first from Christ being the center point, He aligns the work that we're supposed to do. He's the one who sets things in order in our relationships, in our time, in our in our work, so that we're doing it from a standpoint of Him and in Him and through Him. I can picture somebody going, wow, yeah, I knew it. All those slothful people out there. I mean, they're not like me. I, I read my Bible in my quiet time every day. I go to my ladies' Bible study. I serve in the nursery, and I decorate the church every season. I'm not slothful. Look at all that I'm doing for the Lord. And I think that they would say it in that tone of voice as well. I think that's <laughs> right, right. Yeah, yeah but I guess I made kind of a caricature of that. But you know what I'm trying to say? Like, there, there's people who are like, wow, at least, I mean, I read my Bible every day and I volunteer at church. I'm doing great. I'm not slothful. Well, and I think that the, the key is, are you more like Christ today than you were 90 days ago? Um, I think that's really the litmus test, is it's not so much what you're doing, is are you changing and do you know Him more today than you did 90 days ago? Do you know more about His character can you mark times of conviction from his spirit of your own sin and your depravity? That's really the litmus test. It's not anybody can add things to their to-do list. And uh, the church really promotes being more active and, and getting involved. Again, nothing wrong with that. But when it becomes the end in itself, that's when we have to look at, are we really actually flirting with the vice of sloth? So good. With us, Nancy Kane, Program Director of the Caritas Center for Christian Formation. When we come back, how do you really know that you're growing deeper in your relationship with Jesus, like you are today more than you were 90 days ago? Mm-hmm. A lot of people would say they are, and they're not. Right. So how do you know? We'll get to that in just a minute. Hey, welcome. It's the middle of this podcast episode. You know, the spot in most podcasts where you hear an ad of some sort, maybe a thank you to a sponsor. Well, we're going to do something a little different. Here's what I mean. Did you know the most powerful type of marketing is word of mouth? You know, when a friend tells you, hey, have you heard this podcast? It's so good. You've got to listen. And that's what I'm just going to ask for today. We're not going to ask you to buy a product or do anything in particular other than would you share this podcast with a friend? Maybe it's this episode or your favorite or whatever it is. Pick out a friend or two, tell them about the Brian and Janelle podcast, and ask them to give us a shot. That's one of the ways to help us spread the word and help us stand out in the middle of a really crowded podcast space. We'd be so grateful. Thanks a lot. Let's get back to the show. Brian and Janelle with us right now. Nancy Kane, Program Director of the Caritas Center for Christian Formation and Licensed Professional Clinical Counselor. We're in the midst of our series with her looking at the uh, what you know as the seven deadly sins, mm-hmm. but it's just the like the seven primary vices that you can experience in your Christian life. And now, Nancy, you, you mentioned as we're talking about sloth, which is, I mean, for lack of a better term, laziness in your journey with Christ, it sounds like you're saying. Is that a fair summary? Yeah, I think that's accurate. Okay, so with with that in mind, you said that one of the litmus tests to see if you're slothful is, are you closer to Christ and are you conforming your life more to Christ today than you did 90 days ago? I think we have a lot of churches full of people, confident they've done that, and they haven't. How do you really mm-hmm. know that? And, and this is the profound and really sobering test, is when have you allowed yourself to be broken and to see your own sin? Because it, it goes to Isaiah 6, when he was brought, Isaiah was brought before the presence of the Lord, he was undone by his depravity, his sin, and the sin of his people. And I think that's the litmus test. Is there's something in our human nature that just wants to avoid having to look at these hard things, having to look at 
where is it that I'm not becoming like Christ? And allowing the Spirit to do the deeper work of convicting us of pride, arrogance, selfishness, sloth, you know, the things that we're talking about. If that hasn't been happening, I think you have to ask your a very serious, sober question before the Lord. Am I serving you or am I serving the God that I think I want to serve? Oh. We'll worship the God that we create. And often we'll fall into that temptation that Jesus is just there kind of smiling all the time, slapping us on the back and saying, good job, when in fact he is the holy creator who set the world in order and places in our mother's womb and who we then bow our knee to. What about the people who've been saved for a long time, though, and they really know the Bible well, like, and they know what they're supposed to do and not supposed to do. So they're, you know, they're doing pretty good, Nancy. Well, it, it, we're always going on. So when you meet someone who I would consider a holy person, they're very quick to be able to identify their sin patterns and the sins that so easily beset them. The longer we see in Paul's journey, the chronology of his writings, as he got closer and closer to the end of his life, he increased his own definition of himself towards the end. He said, I'm the chief of all sinners. Why is that? Not because he was just being flip or being dramatic, or, but he was seeing the depth of his own sin in light of the, the power and the glory of Christ. So the more we see his glory, the more we're undone by our own sinfulness. I know that you have a different way of looking at what we call devotional time or a quiet time. Reading the, Bi- <laughs> reading the Bible doesn't necessarily do in this. Going to Bible study, going to church. You have coffee while you're reading the Bible, you, know? you got to have a highlighter. highlighter. I had my yeah. highlighter mm-hmm. and all that. It doesn't necessarily create the brokenness you're talking about or the thing of like 90 days ago, you know, am I more, more like Jesus today than 90 days ago? What is it that you do in your quiet time that creates this kind of walk in your faith? Well, I think it's coming before the presence of the Lord first. And I think that's really key. I can I can read my Bible, and I can speak from my own life, as I spent a lot of years being really faithful to read my Bible in the morning and never really encountering Christ and uh, absorbing information, but it not necessarily sinking in because I wasn't really doing it for God. I was doing it so that I would feel good and get a few tips and be on my way. you got to get a picture for yeah. Instagram. <laughs> <laughs> right. And so you learn to do it differently. So now what do you do? So the difference is now I quiet myself. Mm -hmm. I have reminders around me. It might be a cross. It might be something that, a a verse of scripture, something that reminds me that Christ is here and he is present. Mm -hmm. And I make sure all my senses are, are focused on the fact that he is with me and he is not silent. And then I open up my heart to say, Lord, speak, your servant, listen. And then go to scripture and then see what he has to say to me. But it's a different posture. It takes longer, and I can't rush into his presence and demand that he say something or give me two points for the day. Like with anyone who knows you intimately, you don't take that for granted. You take that as as a very special, intimate moment. And you know, I'm, I'm thinking here as we're discussing this, that was perhaps some of what Paul's reasoning was for encouraging people to stay single if they can, because that can help you stay more focused on your relationship with Christ and not being slothful. I think so. And I think that, that, yeah, because the things in the world can get, can preoccupy us. And that's, you know, that's a fair assessment and without judgment. But also then we can step into what's really necessary, and what's really feeding the spiritual life. And I think that's where maturity goes. Is maturity is there's that fine line between immaturity and maturity. Immaturity is you're doing whatever you think is right, whenever you want to do it, however you want to do it. Maturity is stepping in and saying, Lord, shape my day, form my day be it unto me according to your will, and I will be obedient to following it by your power. So then how, how can we live and, and breathe in our marriages and uh, in parenthood in a way that creates this kind of in- intimacy with Christ, or at least enhances it, as opposed to distracting from it? I, it's a matter of where your priorities lie is that I think that um, I, I had a picture when you were saying that of when I was um, commuting to Moody, there was a, one train that I would take from time to time. It was early in the morning. And I remember seeing a fellow had a tiny little Bible and he was reading it, diligent. You could, it's almost like he was so focused on it that the train could have blown up and he would have still kept reading it. <laughs> mm-hmm. And I remember thinking he has set his life in order rightly. He's beginning with what's most important. 
and that carries throughout the day. If Christ is only important first thing in the morning, well, you're going to live your life for yourself mm-hmm. for the rest of the day. You're going to live with whatever's in front of you. But it's developing a rhythm in your day so that you continue to be mindful of Him, which is why the monastics and really the Catholic and the Orthodox Church observe uh, a rhythm of prayer throughout the day because it's the sense of you're being reminded constantly that He is here and that He is the most important thing, and, and we always do His bidding. And, and yet, sh- shouldn't there also be a sense of like brokenness, a, a, an awareness of our own brokenness in the midst of navigating those relationships on a, on, a, on a day-to-day basis? One where we're continually going, man, I'm the problem in this marriage, and I'm the problem in this family, or whatever. Exactly, because we're always two seconds away from sin. And um, that's where sin, as you've heard me say, needs to be a discipline of one's life. It's, discipline is the air that we breathe, the breath that we take, is that that's why Christ came. That's why he came. That's what the cross is all about. And so if I'm not realizing that I'm going to those deeper places of my own conviction of sin, that you're right, I am always the problem. And if I don't deal with myself, other people are going to feel it. If I'm not growing, other people are going to feel the result of that. And yet that's also emotionally heavy. I mean, it's easy to get to slip into a, a, a beat yourself up mode. Because when you start to really see how depraved you are... <laughs> Man, it's, it's like all the time for real. <laughs> but I think that that's where if you if you take your gaze away from who Jesus is, and if you're doing your own work, so to speak, that you're you're the one who's deciding how good or bad you are. Yeah, it's going to be painful. It's going to be heavy. It's going to be it's going to be awful. There's freedom in being rele- being released from our sin because we're being freed to be the people that God always intended us to be. So when it's coming from the Spirit, there's a sweet sorrow with it, sorrow that you've heard the heart of God, but a sweetness of you're being invited to, you're no longer burdened down by your ego or your selfishness or your your pride. You can live into a place of freedom. Mm-hmm. And so when Paul says to freedom, Christ has called us, he, that's a very profound statement because he, Jesus is calling us to be the people he always intended us to be. And sin is always the part that gets us in, gets in the way. And so it just becomes easier to own your sin, I suppose, huh? I think so. I think that, that the more we grow, the more you can see the pattern emerge. And I'm, all, and I'm at this stage of my life, I'm grateful, so grateful for the mercy of God that He doesn't leave me in a place of comfort for too long. Yeah. Because he's, he's jealous for my growth. He's jealous for my, my transformation and keeps moving heaven and earth so that I, um, I'm mindful of who I'm needing to become. And this is why people need to get involved in the Caritas Center for Christian Formation, take the two-year <laughs> spiritual formation course, because this is, I mean, is, is this not kind of the core of what your help people do is to be on that journey we've just been discussing? I think that's an excellent point, and I think that that's where we need Christians to wake up. We need, we need the, the body of Christ to suddenly have an awakening so that they see the profound nature of what the cross means and then bring that to the world. And that's the gospel. Amen. So if somebody wants to get a, be a part of that program, how do they find out about it? Yes. That? They can contact me through our website. It's thecaritascenter.com. And there's a place for apply now. There's also a place for, um, for more information. But they can also, I believe there's a place on the website that they can contact me directly. And for more information, just specifically reach out to me to have some questions about the program. And if I were to do over the beginning of the segment, if I could go back in time, I wouldn't tell you how busy we were this morning. Yeah, I'd, for real. <laughs> I'd, I'd tell you how many mistakes I've made today yeah, and how I'm working right. on it. Is that better? <laughs> it's getting better. I would just wordsmith it a little bit by saying I'm aware deeply that the Spirit might be asked me to change some things. <laughs> That's what I was about to say. Oh, exactly. That's what I was about to say. Wow. Great minds think alike. (laughs) Nancy Kane, we love you, sister, and we encourage people to go again. Check out the Caritas Center for Christian Formation. Can't wait for the next time. Thank you. It's always a delight to be with you guys. Thanks for listening to this episode. Don't forget, if you like what you hear on a weekly basis, we'd be grateful for your ratings and reviews wherever you listen. And also subscribe so you get the latest episodes. Follow us wherever you are on social media and search for us online. We're at briannjanelle.org. Don't miss our weekday morning show with conversations just like this. You can listen on the Moody Radio mobile app or again at our website, briannjanelle.org. Special thanks to the talented team of individuals who tirelessly put together this podcast every week. Josue Villa, 
Mike Reynolds, and Ron Eastwood. The Brian and Janelle Podcast is a production of WCRF Moody Radio Cleveland. Until next time, we're Brian and Janelle.